Hello, today we'll be talking about communication within a neuron. Now I've drawn here a segment of the plasma membrane including different channels and pumps that we'll be later talking about in this video. Now when it comes to neurons, they tend to communicate through exchange of ions. And ions are driven by an electrochemical gradient that will help determine whether an ion will be driven into the cell or its intracellular environment or driven out of the cell, extracellular environment. Now when it comes to electrochemical gradient, we'll be breaking it down into its two core components. The chemical part just states that most particles move from a concentration of high to a lower concentration, while the electrical part states that um, these are ions, so they have charges attached to them. And we'll have to take into account whether opposites track or like charges repel one another. Now the key players when it comes to the electrochemical gradient that we'll be talking about include sodium and potassium. Now, some other ions we are we won't be covering today, but do affect the communication of a neuron include chlorine and calcium. Calcium especially is important when it comes to the release of neurotransmitters all the way at the axon terminal. But for now, we'll be focusing on sodium and potassium. Okay. So as you can see here, I've drawn a sodium potassium pump, and the sodium potassium pump is very important when it comes to establishing our cell's resting membrane potential. So our resting membrane potential in a typical neuron tends to be around negative 70 millivolts. Some professors might say negative 65, but the main idea to understand is that with the sodium potassium pump, when the neuron is at rest, inside it will be negative compared to outside. Okay? Alright. So the sodium potassium pump tends to take three sodium ions out of the cell and it tends to transport two potassium ions into the cell. So overall, you're going to have a high concentration of sodium outside the cell. So lots of sodium and a high concentration of potassium inside the cell. Okay, so we're going to be looking at each ion and how our electrochemical gradient will either push the ion inside or outside the cell. So let's look at sodium first. Okay, so sodium is a charged particle. Because of the sodium potassium pump, it's highly concentrated outside the cell. So naturally, it'll want to come into the cell. It's drawn by the low concentration of sodium inside the cell, and the cell membrane, or inside the cell, is negative. So, opposites attract. However, because sodium has this positive charge, it can't pass through our bilipid membrane. It's going to have to go through these ion channels right here. So, if an ion channel decides to open up, whether it's through binding of a chemical messenger or anything else like that, the sodium is going to rush in really fast and basically changes membrane potential to a less negative or even positive number. Mm -hmm. Now with potassium, because of the sodium potassium pump, they're highly concentrated inside the cell. However, like sodium, it has a positive charge, but at resting membrane potential, our cell tends to be negative. So opposites attract, potassium and the negativity of the inside of our cell, it's not going to let potassium leave as fast if an ion channel opens up for it. So if an ion channel does open up for potassium, it's still going to be transported out of the cell, but it won't be on the same magnitude as sodium coming into the cell. So these are the core components you'll need to be able to understand, and they'll come into play once we go over action potential. 